Well, if you can hear buzzing in the background, I do apologise. I've actually left my window open. I'm currently um, getting checks done here before leaving Cali. I've taken venison across from the UK, used the Euro Tunnel, and uh, I'm now currently sitting in a loading bay getting these vets checks done, and I've forgotten to close my window. So um, I do apologise about the, the, the rumbling in the background. What a day it's been across uh, the south uh, as I've driven down the M11, on the M25, then on the M20. Heavy, persistent rainfall, even a layer of water lying on the road surface. I've seen um, a couple of accidents on my travels as well. So a very nasty day, that's for sure, across the south and southeast of the British Isles. And even here in Calais, periods of heavy torrential rainfall and gusty winds. So, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting afternoon weather wise that's for sure but uh, yeah um polar vortex looks as if it is going to maintain itself as we go through the next couple of weeks anyway i've kind of dismissed any kind of threat of any cold period coming up associated with the polar vortex it's been more linked with the manjulian oscillation the tropics um and the, the tropical late season tropical development and there is still rumblings of, of tropical development in the next week or so here so we're going to have to keep an eye on that by the way because even the nao and the ao is kind of at the very end of the run trying to hint at some sort of negative so we need to keep an eye on that but certainly if you want to look specifically at the 10 millibar level of the polar vortex so that's a way up at the top of the stratosphere you play through this loop and there is very, very little in the way of anything causing any sort of weakness or displacement of any of any appreciable manner. And you can see here as I play through the loop, minus 82, minus 84 Celsius within the core of the PV certainly is going to maintain a fairly strong look overall. If you were to take away the Mandrillian oscillation, a potential threat of some sort of cold later down the road you would almost look at this here and go you pretty much guarantee a positive arctic oscillation positive north atlantic oscillation and therefore mild taking us right the way through at least the first half of december certainly the cfsv2 is hinting at that you can see here week one very very warm week two week three week four week five keeping an eye on the date here at the top fourth through the 11th of December, and I know the CFSV2 can be a little bit biased towards warm, but um, you know it's um, we can't ignore this either. Um, you know, there's no point in just wish casting and hoping, uh, you know, kind of predicting or, or forecasting what we want people to kind of hear and see. Certainly, this would be nice, wouldn't it? This is the ECMWF slow depth chart, by the way, for Tuesday the 15th of November. What we're going to see, and uh, we'll watch and see whether that takes place or not. What we are going to see, however, is we are going to see uh, more wind and rain coming up over the next couple of days. Now, if I can try and get the right chart, it would be helpful. Um, this is off the ECMWF. Uh, let's look at the overview chart. So this is the current setup here. There's that mess that brought all the wind and rain uh, through the course of today. Uh, that is exiting. We've got an area of low pressure uh, just to the northwest of the British Isles. We've got more wind and rain, as you can see here, moving through uh, from a southwest to northeast direction during the course of tomorrow and through Tuesday. But what happens is we've got the area of high pressure over Europe. That kind of slides westwards. And essentially what that does is it forces all the weather that's kind of congregating over the Atlantic, moving towards the UK. You back the whole upper earth pattern, back the way westwards, retrogression is called. Then, of course, you have um, a, a drier period. And Wednesday, right the way through Saturday, even next Sunday, it looks as if we do get a drier condition. But with drier conditions come southwest winds and warmer temperatures. 17, 18, possibly even 19 degrees is not out of the question during the second half of this week. So, yeah, we're back to warmer than normal temp, like bona fide warmer than normal, not just 
mild, but actually downright warm for the time of the year. So there's no getting away from that. Um, you know, this overall warm theme just wants to continue. It's got to break sometime, hasn't it? But, you know, I'm not seeing anything hard uh, evidence of any change coming up. Certainly looking at the uh, Thursday, so this is the upcoming Thursday period. You always hear the trough kind of digs all the way down towards the Azores. We've got an associated frontal system with that 955 millibar low to the south of Greenland. That attached frontal system takes it all the way down to the Azores. So, of course, with high pressure on the near continent, with the trough all the way down to the Azores, look at the, the, the air flow here. We've got those isobars uh, drawing that warmth up from the south, looking at the 850 millibar temperature anomaly chart here for the same period. And that is a lot of warm air coming north, that's for sure. And uh, so, yeah, um, so we get this blip, we get this drier spell, we get this um, warmer air coming in from the southwest during the course of uh, during the second half of the upcoming work week and then as we go through um, the period next weekend and into the following week it looks as if we start to see the Atlantic moving back in so we've got a, a, an injection of stronger winds aloft that kind of uh, kind of digs south eastwards if you notice here over the Atlantic so we're starting to change the shape of the upper pattern and then we've got systems digging further south once again. And the ECMWF is hinting. Now remember I just showed you that snow chart. Notice what happens here. It's, it's drawing colder air from Greenland, cycling around that circulation. And on the back side of that, it's indicating some sort of snow breaking out over the highlands here. Let's have a quick and closer look at uh, the UK uh, to see exactly what that's showing here. So this is right up to the end of next weekend and into the early portion of the following week and uh, you can see that it is hinting if it will refresh itself and um, if it isn't going to I'll, I'll have to cut it at that and um, but yeah you, you did see the chart there we'll wait and see whether anything uh, comes about from that so yeah we just have to be patient still early we're only in you know on the 6th of November and uh, you know just based on purely what's going on now we cannot then say that is what's going to happen during the course of the winter season so uh, it's all to play for if you ask me so anyway that's it for today i do appreciate you watching as always please like share with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button enjoy the rest of your day bye for